I'm Aaron Sagers coming at you from New York Comic Con where we are about to check out the cast from The Librarians Season 2. Welcome to the library. We saw Frankenstein's monster in the trailer. Who else are we going to be facing off against? We've got all these fictionals come to life, which is really fun. We've got Pro Shakespeare as Prospero, um, who conjures up James Moriarty, criminal mastermind from Sherlock Holmes, to be his guardian. Um, and that plays out throughout the season. Uh, the Queen of Hearts, Frankenstein, it's... Um, it's limitless, you know? It's, yeah. it's really fun. That's cool. Well, how has Eve sort of evolved or changed as a leader since we, I guess, we last saw her? I would say she's really, she's now part of the team. She's no longer technically the leader. I mean, she, her set of skills sort of dictates, they rely on her and they trust that she knows how to, how to charge forward with these missions. So she's necessary in that regard. Um, but she really, more than anything, she found a family in, this, in the three librarians in training, and she misses them. So while she was initially invited by the library to be Flynn's guardian, uh, and he would like to keep adventuring with her, she misses her new family. So she's there's a push-pull where she wants to come back and make sure they're okay and check in with them, and, and Flynn would like to keep adventuring. Oh, joy. Where do we find Jenkins at the, the top of the second season? We find him in the annex at the library now that, that has returned, but very, def very fraught because the library is ill. It has come back, but it's not right. There are rooms that are missing, rooms that are upside down, artifacts that are disappearing. And he's, and, and some of the, from, for some of the season, he's very quiet about that because he thinks it's his fault, but he's trying to fix it. So he's in a, this great dilemma. Plus then on top of that, with the fictionals coming to life and the other adventures coming, that he has to try and balance both worlds. Uh, we really enjoyed the interplay with your character and Duloc. Duloc is still out there, potentially. Are we going to see more with you and Matt Frewer? Uh, I would, you know, I don't, I, no, maybe, maybe. I mean, he is he is Jenkins' dad, as we come to realize by the end of season one. So, you, I mean, dads always show up at some point, don't they, unless they're dead, and he's not at all dead. No, yeah, neither of you can no, die, I guess. So, that is correct. And I guess just finally, uh, have you ever kind of not returned a book to a library, and do you wish to confess to that right now? Uh, I can honestly and totally say that I have never done that. I respect books too much. I spent, I spent so much time in the library of New Orleans, my hometown when I was a boy, that I would bring them back sometimes early just so I could get out more. Who can we look forward to you mixing it up with? I think, for me, the most exciting person that Cassandra is mixing it up with this year is Jenkins. Um, and, and she's truly picked a, a remarkable person to go up against. I love working with uh, John Larroquette. It's like the professional honor of my life. Um, he's so funny and so amazing. But Cassandra really challenges him in a, in a different way, in a way that he hasn't really been challenged before on the subject of magic. And um, it, it's been interesting to watch them sort of deal with each other like this. So what can we look forward to from Jacob Stone in uh, season two? More uh, action adventure, maybe yeah. some romance, maybe even some music. I don't know, what's gonna happen? <laughs> no no music, I know that. And uh, not, not any romance. He kind of got his heart like torn out last year when he, when he sort of fell for someone, even though it was only a 24 hour period, and, uh, and she ended up dying. So I still think he feels bad about that. There is more fighting though, and I'm really, I'm really loving that. Um, uh, you, like, you, Eve, Eve Baird, played by the beautiful Rebecca Romaine, her character trusts Jake a little bit more when it comes to fisticuffs, so she's now bringing him up with her, and they walk side by side into a fight, you know, and it's like, and that, that makes me feel good, and you know, I'm playing Elliot Spencer for as long as I did on Leverage, you know, it's a dance, and I love doing it, and, uh, and now they're starting to trust the character a little bit more. Season two, librarians, do we get to see Ezekiel pull off any cool, uh, I don't know, heists or yeah. hacks or anything? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're going to get to see, uh, definitely going to get to see some of that. But um, uh, beyond that, not only have his abilities developed, because, I mean, let's be honest, his abilities, uh, as extraordinary as they are, they don't exactly apply to the world of magic uh, just yet. He's had to, he's already conquered this landscape of breaking into museums and banks, and now it's coming to a, this magic world where he's breaking into pyramids and things like that, like uh, the way puzzles were made. 2,000 years ago aren't like they're made now. So uh, he's had to not only apply his skill set, but adapt it and develop it. So the fact that he's less cynical about the world of magic has allowed him to, um, I think, delve in deeper and, and uh, really, really accelerate his, uh, his learning process.